acting, you discuss that matter with the Premier to understand how does the acting capacity comes in so that you don't just shoot from the hip. So that's what I wanted to correct on our speak. Hi. Honourable members, can we defer this question? Uh, yeah. All these other matters that have been raised, uh, 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 hopefully... Honourable Lituka, I'm closing the matter. Honourable members, you want to debate this matter, and I, I, I thought we shouldn't. Um, I just want the clarity, please, Speaker, if you allow me. Proceed, Honourable, Honourable Lituka. And out of the two, I hope there are no more heads that will come up on this matter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker. I just wanted clarity as to what is the position of Honorable Machinini now in the House, whom we know to be the MEC for that particular uh, uh, ministry. What is now the, what, what, what role is he playing being present and yet he cannot? Or is he no longer an MEC? But we understood that the other person who was placed there was just uh, acting in that capacity. Now, what, what is the position then of Honorable Machinini in the House? Thank you. Uh, Honorable uh, Buti. Uh, no, thanks, Speaker. I think you, you already made your ruling that after Honorable Duka. Uh, you will not recognize any other person. So let me just uh, abide. Uh, Honorable members, um, uh, this question is, is deferred to the next uh, sitting. Thank you. We proceed to speakers' debate uh, in terms of Rule 74. We now proceed. Um, Honorable Peterway. Yes, Honorable Speaker, I just want to find out from you on the notice we got for the plenary and in the WIPS um, committee, we uh, approved that um, the conferral of voting, final voting mandates as well as um, reports by the committees. And I see they're not on today's order paper. Um, why has it been removed? Thank you. you. You don't approve the order paper you recommend. The order paper is approved by the speaker. I think I have uh, responded uh, 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 on this matter. Even yesterday, I received a letter from Honorable Jankerson, and I am going to request that the members look into your rules and, 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 and look into your rules. What you, maybe I should as well uh, uh, explain. You are talking about the matter of the debate. Madam Speaker, can I report my question? On the notice of the plenary, in the work room, we approved reports of committees that would, would have served today, as well as the conferral of the voting mandate. It is in the notice of the plenary, but it's not serving today in front of this house. My, my, so my apologies. Reason? Maybe when you speak, you must remove the mask so that I can hear. It's becoming a challenge. Honorable uh, uh, Peter Wayne, the reports were the reports that were uh, for the bills of the NCOP, which have since been uh, 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 Deferred. So up until that time, they come back to us with other dates. We will then bring those reports uh, uh, to the House. Can I speak, Madam Speaker? Are we on a dialogue now? No, no I just want to hear, and the committee reports, they were two. No, there are no committee reports. There were that committee is my... reports, Madam Speaker. One was from, um, I think, public work. No, I'll go look on, but there were two committee reports that were supposed to serve. Those those reports, Honourable uh, 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 Peter Way, they, they are withheld because the NCOP has postponed its process. We cannot approve those reports before the, the NCOP uh, finishes its business. 
Thank you. Honorable members, let's proceed with the debates. Uh, with the debate, we now proceed to the debate on Women's Day. Every year in August month, our country commemorates Women's Month. This is a month where we pay tribute to the more than 20,000 women who marched to the union buildings on the 9th of August, 1956, in protest against the extension of past laws to women. Honorable Deputy Chief Whip, Ms. Saram Leleki may address the House for, the, for 18 minutes. Thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker, and good morning to Honorable Members. Uh, let me take this opportunity to join the rest of the country in celebrating the Women's Month, not only as a woman, but also as an activist, who is duty-bound to, not to only celebrate, but to commemorate the life of an icon of the struggle for women liberation. May I shout my like a uh, whom many prefer to call mother of the of the black freedom in South Africa. Honorable Speaker, it is befitting that as we celebrate the 150 years since the birth of this icon, we need to use the, the, this opportunity to pause and uh, reflect the strives made so far to improve and better the lives of, of women in our country. Mama Shadati was not only a visionary, but an intellectual, intellectual, a, a leader of note, a teacher as a fearless teacher and a fearless servant of our people. It is my view that we looking back at the life of this icon presence as with uh, an opportunity to do introspection and take stock. Honorable broke many glass ceilings and became a woman of many fists. And if there was still an opportunity to place her name in the book of books, just like the proverb, uh, the to one woman, I would be the first to do so. Her pride did not only lie in this, but fighting for the rights of women and their participation in decision-making structures and processes. She was a woman of many first, but above all, an embodiment of excellence and a trade trailblazer in women's political participation, as well as women's, women's leader. Uh, speaker, research confirmed that Gerald Matrake was an activist and a performer. Uh, she was a member of African Jubilee Choir. An internationalist, internationalist, she traveled to at least two con uh, continents when traveling was not easy as it is today. And intellectual, she became symbol of academics excellence and one of the first women in South Africa to acquire a bachelor, the Bachelor of Science degree in 1901 from a, a prestigious a Wilberforce University in the United States. Women's leadership, she was a touch bearer in women's political participations as a result was the only woman in the room at the found, uh, founding meetings of the ANC at Methodist Church at, in Bayhook in Bluefontein on the 8th January 1912. Advocates for women's rights, leader of the first woman Women's March of 1913 held in a Bluefontein against the extension of reference books to women. Sherlock uh, Matlake was a pioneer in one of the greatest of human causes, working under extraordinary difficult 
uh, circumstances to lead a people in the face of prejudice, not uh, only against her race, but three against her gender. Her courage and leadership allowed her to uh, transcend religious and culture barriers. Honorable Speaker, in 1918, she was she was she was so so she was co-founded the Bantu Women's League and became the first president, which not only fought against past laws but aroused public opinion on another equality, disgusting practices of medical inspection of black women before entering domestic services. In today's word, would define her as an activist of sexual reproductive health and rights. She later taught of a primary and a secondary school she re, re, and she co-founded called Wilberforce Institution in Everton in the Val. The institution is still in existence to this day. Uh, her work as a social worker and native welfare officer can be argued to be the best uh, portrayal of her strength and distinguished ability. But like I had, as in most instances, seen the need and taken the initiative to serve uh, people without uh, funds and for no pay. Her opinion and accommodations were sought by the state and in many cases, uh, she succeeded to get suspended uh, sentences for the cases where lawyers often failed in cases of their clients. Uh, Honorable Speaker Matake understood uh, the inter in intersectional identities of women who faced multiple discrimination and imbued uh, with the spirit of service. Her work includes economic empowerment, whereby she set up an employment agency for Africans in Johannesburg. She also worked with young people who were in conflict with the law. As a human rights activist, not only did she help with reducing sentences for juvenile uh, the linguistics, she also had the ability to gain insight into human life and conduct by assisting with their rehabilitation and socioeconomic needs. While being the, uh, the first black woman in the many places where she operated in, she understood if that for many meaningful representation of women, she needed to rally other women to amplify their voices in the struggle for a gender equality. Honorable Speaker, the current global uh, pandemic requires us and as women to be flexible and adaptive to the character of the life modeled by Shark McClake. We need to ensure that as women, we hold each other hands, both black and white, tall and short, life rate, literate and illiterate. A ruling party or opposition. The magnitude of the global and domestic challenges, the almaning, the almaning increases of natural disasters as a result of climate change, health pandemic and the continuing rises in poverty and equality. We need to re rethink a new of our responsiveness uh, that need to be uh, meaningful and impactful. More than ever before, 
in the history of humanity. We need a greater cooperation and solidarity in order to face these multi multi set uh, challenges posed by health pandemic such as COVID-19, challenges posed by climate change such as the inter, inter, in, intensification and increasing it frequently and naturally disaster uh, as well as the continuing as widening poverty gap, food security, energy, economic and financial global crisis. The outbreak of COVID-19 has particularly uh, presented now challenges of narrow uh, denationalism, where some of development uh, developed countries uh, scramble to be the first to in, in, inoculate their population uh, with little or no regard to other countries. We have observed a trend wherein some governments are using their financial master to, financial muscles to sign agreements with a pharma, pharmaceutical manufacturers to supply their own population with vaccine ahead of them becoming available for their for the other countries. In practice, in particular terms, if we were to vaccinate only people from developed countries at the exclusion of others, it would mean that the virus will continue to range havoc elsewhere in the wrong in the world. Vaccine nationalism is therefore extremely short-sighted and morally reprehensive. So we must therefore confront vaccine uh, nationalism though our international solidarity work. Though this was this work was uh, uh, or was or we must uh, build better health care system, whether a person uh, in London or in Mangawu, Soweto or in uh, New York, it is important to know that the, no the notion of the solidarity has defined the work of the United States, United Nations since uh, its inspections in 1945, drawing together national nations and people to promote peace and security, human rights and development, international solidarity is one of the fundamental values uh, indispensable to international relations with. Uh, with the outbreak of COVID-19, it is clear that the international solidarity far exceeded to sense of a common bond. It implies understanding uh, the reality that as we grow a global uh, community, our destiny is in intertwined. Solidarity requires a uh, outward rejection of narrow nationalism, but that by its nature infringes on the rights and liberties of the others. From injustice of the, our past, it is clear that the progressive women of the South Africa have no choice but to stand in solidarity with struggling and marginalized, marginalized people. As we build a better South Africa, solidarity must reflect unity of purpose as a bridge builder towards persuading the opposing, opposing opposing groups to converge at the center, holding them together into one heterogeneous whole and uh, uh, nurturing 
it with the universal values of human rights, with specific uh, purpose of promoting the human rights, national solidarity, therefore, has to be the bridge across those differences and oppose, 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 oppose Opposites, connecting the diverse people and political parties with their uh, heterogeneous inter interest in mutually respectful beneficiary and reciprocal uh, relations. In which went with the principle of human rights and justice. Honorable Speaker. Finally, we need to stand in solidarity with the struggling and marginalized people of our country for a simple reason, the threats imposed by instabilities associated uh, with conflict, poverty, water scarcity, population pressure, the adverse social and economic efforts include the impact of labor and immigration, which affects, which affects women in particularly. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable uh, Mulelegi, Honorable Clute. Thank you, Speaker. It was good to hear uh, Honorable Moleleke speak about diversity. You know, in the book, The Brunt of the War and Where It Fell, the well-known philanthropist and true lady, Emily Hobbels, dedicated her book to, and I quote, the women of South Africa whose endurance and suffering, resignation in humiliation, independence under force, dignity in humiliation, tolerance in pain, and quiet acceptance of death had gripped her in wonder and had provoked sympathy throughout the world. Speaker, the struggle of other women in the country is also part of our history. By the end of the anglo boer War, there were 160,000 Afrikaner women and children and 130,000 black people in British concentration camps. In total, 32,000 Afrikaner women and children died. Approximately 20,000 black South Africans died in these concentration camps. This is a shared history, speaker, we cannot deny. To the voortrekker months in 1843 gelaten besluit het om nie meer weerstand te bied in die Britse annexatie van Natalny was hulle vrou woedend. Die mans was hoog bekleid, die vrou het gesê nie. Want daar was veldslagte waarin hulle, dis vir mans en vrouwe, saamgevag het. En hulle mans het hulle die versekering gegee dat hulle saam besluit in sou neem oor die toekomst. Voortrekker men and women would decide together about their future. Daar die vrouwen so liever koolvoet oor die Drakensberger loop as om weer hulle vry prijs te gee en weer onder Britse beheer te wees. Vandag is ons trots op hulle. Vandag is haar vrouwe wat enkel ouders is, wat alleen broedwinners is, omdat hulle mans nie werk kan kry as gevolg van die ANC, sy rechtstellende aksie en BEE beleid nie. Vandag is hulle professionele vrou wat in harde en hoogst kompeterende omgeving sy hulle merk moet maak. Al hulle wat die verskonings maak nie, vir die omstandighede sê ons dankie. So speaker, Women's Month does not only belong to the ANC. In fact, the ANC cannot be trusted with Women's Month. Currently, right now, the embodiment of state capture and corruption accused number one in the reason why this uh, this province and this country is the mess it is in, is serving time in the jail in KZN. And he's the catch speaker. And I ask to see you, Madam Premier, do you still believe that the free state is Zuma country and it belongs to him? Go check history. Because that's exactly what you sang at the Women's Day celebration in 2015. And then, how should the women of the free state then trust anything your party has to say today? Thank you, speaker. Thank you, Honorable Plutti. Honorable Mekesin. Thank you, Speaker. 
Here it to me, you say, when I go to Parliament, the Bully Supreme, the Bully Sewonke, or Mama, about Hoyo, Basse Free State, about Pete, Imizi, Betala Ganzim. Speaker, Unyaga Nunyaka says, up, sit, sit debating a Linyanga, Yamanina. Did you know when Yanni speak on book? See a tetter, doesn't do the guy Ekushalin. See, I'm the Sikotuke. Sipin the Sibuya Cacopel of Nunyaga, Siso Tetan in the Essence Gilay. Sing a check, sing a report back. Uba, last year, Sitte, Zakwenzanje, Quenze Gilena, is high time you to account doesn't do Tetangas. The reality, Madam Speaker, is that Nenyanga Yamanina. As he celebrate her, that is why Abanya Oman, Abanya Banto, and Abay Tatilan, a little holy day, Lukumila, Benzo Ibrai, Bali Bali, Ububalo Ubalo Lega, Walenyanga, your mama. And in their call, and I believe, Oman, back in 1956, Father Bona, in the Sedenziabo, see three tassing I recognize in their color, Apollo, and Rabena Balele Corner, by a Petuka. And the song gets in the one day will account as if it are or Shalot Matrike. I don't know how influence you have, comrade, and anti black organization. See, I under this administration. Ba O Mama, be Kutiplua Amatoni, be Obe Bandra, Utatuini Kubo, be Fumene, ba Itate, ba Yolasa, it she's so. Uko mama, uko ofenich, apoba fazi, i shelter, benge na kutia. Uko o mama, bantuana, ezikolweni, abatinga i sanitary towels, sizi chise, sitate i half cooking oil, ezi 500 gram, siti siyozi chisa, siti bazi lutil. Mi speaker, as a promote into ye, ye violence, and as ya vuma nano ba, the untetum of tattling alelo, but also you cannot deploy Neke to deploy a matroni, Ukuba Maka Fune Ababantu Basare Payo, Babulala O Mama, Babula Labantu and Abetres Golun, because this song gets an abafazi as it could save. And I hope this statement must not be interpreted incorrectly. We believe in the full rule of law and the criminal should be prosecuted. But it seems like the priority is there to the very skew. We are going to come here again and act as concern, telling us lies about how criminal will face the full matter of the law. P. Kwabani, Kelipi Pasha, Ayense Gilondo. When very same law enforcement agents are using to fight is into as kunabo as a political parties. Go ku e pran forti kuna kule nyanga yamanina. Umtana on kwengwe on umfana only twenty-six years, wari pa umakulu only seventy years. Ufumane only one life sentence. Uza buya usem pinda ripe. C P Sitinis ngo mama. Instead of deploying soldiers and handling actual criminal, we send them to arrest student, city, but threatena unyana ka uwo uwo rubet loni obekuwe kutoa gumonga meluwele lizwe. It is it is a prime time to tell a standable plan and combat of the gender-based violence. Ultimately, women to feel safe and secure in their own country and see a mengine less tandanga yo. When Mama Wini Madikezela Mandela, why a city singer is Susana Nini, why a teti, Kuba, why a tini, why a teta, and it is still relevant even today. We are tired of this thing, isn't the guy? Speaker, I could contest if you say, Ushungu, Gio Tatwa Utata, Onga Boni, Onga Respect, Abafaz, Kunyanga, your mama, and Zumea Semanga Wong, a man who disrespect women. Engwa boni the value of women. Na unku bekuwe kunyanga yetu. Wenzwa imeya ya semanga um. Siti ninga bafazi. Because we know the behavior of that man. Gender-based violence against women and the girl child does not only take lives of individuals, but also affect their livelihood and the, the economy of this country. 2014 KPMG report labeled too costly calculated the cost of GBV between 28 billion to 42 billion per year. 
that is 1% roughly, 1.3 of the country gross domestic product. The stats provide a painted gloomy picture of the harsh reality that the women and girls live with, living in this country are back safe. Furthermore, a special, a special month such as August, which are meant to celebrate and promote the fight of gender-based violence, who have been proven be ineffective. Asinabo o mama ba petty position. Abe kona kubeko ababa wiki si ayabazi si aba elect a local government. But I can tell you they are not gonna finish the term. Abaza replacing a mad daughter. Is it fair to what we are doing to these women? Why is it alangabo? Why ni gababeki abat abla mad daughter kubatina sna confident kun? Premier, it is believed that si ayaz uimpo koto of our time. Koto is in dozen zekayo. Apa now a speaker of Pete, Lenzu, and Kulukangaka, Abafazi, Abatatua Serias. I do wish one day the man next to you, Ingatingaba, a female next to you, or advise Ayo how to run this house. We are tired of this thing. Everything is men, Abas advising Go Mama. I can tell you, from the premier, uh, honorable speaker, the free. free Free of charge, anything that seems to advise the pro anti agenda, Abanya Baza reject. They have managed to drive their core black leaders out. Black women are on the receiving end of injustice. And we do understand, and we understand some of this left, because Abanya Bagozo party, because Balambila, Batella is song. But Fanon won us, was still a black skin and white mask. This is why this is so pain on me, how the ANC allowed itself to be used by the racist and anti-black detractors wearing other colors, but destroy your umamo busisuem kweban. I hope after this, Baku Yokin to come among kweban, Sizaka Sime Sisipati Savantaba Miam. I think we need to, to have a serious plan on the importance of role of women in society. Majority of our homes heated by single mothers, grandmothers, and, uh, 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 and mothers, so that argument of the woman cannot be lead vicolous and stupid to say at least. The pathetic excuse of minister who's only vocal on active of alcohol being confiscated and read the states as calling percent is as if real. He was un, um, unmoved when he informed us about between the April and, 20, and June 2021. Uvulo cases are almost 10,000. What a pain about this piece of text is that 10,000 only reported case does not paint the entire picture of us, how big pandemic is, does not cater of unreported cases. Every year we are going to this, use this quote by Thomas Sankara. I quote, comrade, there is no true social revolution without the liberation of women. May, may eyes never seen and my feet never be taking me for society where the half of people I held in silence. I hear the roar of human silence. I sense the rumble of their storm and feel fury of their revolt, close quote. Speaker, no woman is safe out of this country. He, right here in this street, a policewoman was killed by the husband last week, Wambulal Agukonde Tetekai. Madam Premier, before I speak on our land, we, on about land, we need to have honest discussion on how women are treated in this, in, in this August house. There is a tendency of wanting to render women useless where they find the only, only position and allocate the deputy, the deputy secretary, and the treasurers in all political parties. We don't give women the, the position of responsibility fully. Women can only be only good enough to deputize. It is normal sometimes we need to national and provincial, regional and local of the organization to point whether they even our students who have formation of women to treat like this. I can really comment, uh, I cannot really comment about other political parties, but Speaker, this is something that we need to change urgently as we approach the local government, government and election. We also need to look at our candidates to support and give the, and give the female the support that they deserve. Female councillors are mostly likely not to go in to finish their terms. They will always come on the list on the public register, but come after the five 
years, they are not going to be here. One could try to diagnose of the opportunity and the tourism. One could be the woman set up to failure and sabotage because the main reason of intrusion just to numbers some as a pursuit equality. Two, it, it could not be a it could not be because we push our people, we could sometimes believe that they can use and manipulate as they serve their agenda because it's not capacity and credible. After serving the agenda, they are discarded. Let us get one thing straight, Speaker, that no to blind to the fact that all women are progressive and we want, cannot see endorsing incompetent or mediocrity. We are criti criticizing any leader that should not be based on the capacity. They should be based on the capacity, not because of the skin of the color of the gen or, 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 the, or, or of the color of the skin and the gender. For example, some of like the former mayor, Mayor Olim Lamlen, some you can defect but criticize. They should never be should because she was not supposed to be there in for the first place. What be because I see as weak. Um, I am not the I'm, I'm not the future I'm not the future teller, but it's near to some of you here, like here. Honorable Robert are arrested for something. You should not be criticized because you are a woman, but based on your work. So by far as you may, we political opponent, but hardship very much live and support an in. Speaker in Lala, Iasi Kuba, Esizueni, and Abantu Ababulawa in Lala, and Goma, Mango Bunin Zibabo, and the Sigia Libala, Okuti, Uba Oma, Masingabapa, Umshaba, Premier, Yonke into Ekoyo Yen Lala, Ingaba into Ya Isolo, Singaquas, Uksebenz, Labanto, and Singaquas, the Sime Singabafaz, Sitella Okubuza, its sanitary towels, as a Sasses attend the Sue, La Company, I send the Emma Fubes, the Fumana Nini for free of charge. If you condom. Zona si agua zuzifumana. One is why sanitary towels singa zifumbani honorable MEC of social development. Una condemn so to my space so that let me see let me let me show mama Charlotte inga lebale kidebule. Thank you honorable my guest honorable deputy speaker Mama Bena. Thank you very much honorable speaker. The opportunity. Uh, Sika, allow me to greet all the women in the universe on this month where we are celebrating women based in Bogot. And allow me Sika, to greet them by saying, Strap the women, we strap the, the, the rock. Honorable Speaker, we pay tribute to more than 20,000 women from all races and every corner of South Africa in solidarity with one another. March to the Union Building on the 9th of August, 1956, in protest against ex extension of past law to women. Urban Area Act 1950, a law, a, a law which require African person to, to carry a document to prove that they are allowed to enter the white areas during apartheid regime. This was a total frustrating oppression. This law was also used as a tool to control and subject women to being the object of men. This one, when I speak of uh, some men making women the object. Kiona e elungur today we are faced with gender based violence. Mo elungur basadin se babulawa, banana banana se babulawa, ibilin se baripi. We should, as we celebrate the women, bear in mind the sacrifice of women who, under the inspires of, federa of Federation of South African Women, with babies on their backs and other brought white children employees much against this an act past law. It was during this match where a popular slogan was initiated. Watin Tabafaz, Watin Timbogot. 
Honorable Speaker is, is also a tribute to pioneer of women's movement in this country, dating back to 1913, which, which produced the stalwart like Me Charlotte Manyane Macleg, a leader who ensured that women fight for their political position and aspiration through the establishment of African National Congress Women's League, which encouraged women to stand up and fight for their freedom, both locally and internationally. And by, by, by mentioning that, I would like to reassure Honorable Makeseni Hore as a leader, as a dean, as a as, 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 as dean, we have to, to push and push up until women are free at last. They laid a foundation based on solidarity with one another, persuading the aspiration and needs of women in a constrained and conservative environment dominated by men. A lesson that illustrates that it is only when we look together that we can achieve more as a society. Honorable Speaker, we therefore need to form to we, we, we need to form time to time as we move together in, the, in line of march towards the building of new national democratic society. Reflect on this foundation laid by our, our former leaders so as to be able to move forward as a country and to be, and, and to be in solidarity with with, with with other women. Honorable Speaker, it is this system which encourages the abuse of women and children by their male counterparts, whom are, it places them above as head of the family. At some point, they must forget that we are all equal. The on, ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has also enhanced the depth of inequalities, unemployment, and poverty. The women and youth being ones who are part of these challenges and is therefore imperative to transform the employment partners in favor of latter being preferred when employees are to be done. As women, Honorable Speaker, we have to make sure that women are occupying a serious position, like the uh, uh, Honorable Makesine has already indicated. It is high time that as women, we talk to, to deputize men. However, the government should applaud on the strides and made towards affirming women in occupying position of power in all spheres. However, more still need to be done. In this regard, towards achieving 50-50 percentage, split in line with 2030 Millennium Development Goals. The above in evident by the rise, rising level of gender-based violence through the country where women are heinously maimed and killed by either their boyfriends or the husband. Honorable Speaker, the time is now to collectively stand up as a society in general. Women in particular to fight this pandemic and women trafficking for our girls who are sold to be sex workers. Honorable Speaker, women should continue to fight their space in leadership position, especially in political area to able to, to, to be able to become presidents for, for we know they are born leaders. Honorable Speaker, I'm saying as women we are born leaders because if you can check me emuli emu kaharantu ya haiki enesi yu o yale la paleo, if me alisiko ebe dintodi ya peleka. That is why today I'm standing here boldly and saying, as women, we are born leaders. So it is proper for them to take that leadership role 
alluded to, to them by nature, not by anyone, by nature. But this will only be achieved through women's movement, which were long time established to take forward the struggle of, of women. Honorable Speaker, allow me, I'll, I'll allow me, Honorable Speaker, as we, we congratulate women, Kamata Pa Aba Ilemba Yeta, 1956, Honorable Speaker, and Tumele, Honorable Speaker, Kere Hunku Ena Yake Samulao, Madiba Hocha Amatala, Isari Ere Basa Robes, Relibelezi Messi, Eswene Ribone Boholo, Bama, so make ke Kahara Mitte. Ya Boruna Moselo Sebanteng Hudimu Hutimajitab Tauna Hinta Sarora Haholo Bautra Midumo Yaho Kopa Mushala Lisedi Kahara Miti Yaha Boruna Kiha Sel Seboko Honorable Speaker Itabi Eli Sangwana Ya Shiki Fetwan Seboko Itabi Sangwana Ya Rapiwan Meyo Hinkyo Lang Sahai Kaji Koka Mo Seboko Sita Ukrahalang Lika Hutimajitab ho ho ya mathakala rapothabe ha isa molaetsa ho kopana ho ho kopa ba holo nako ya hore me ke eng ka haramose ba holo mamela modimo ba phofolo tse hlaha ha di rora di thabeng ha ho bona tokoloho e kena ka haramalapa le metse honorable speaker we are not going to tire as women hore re lwane le hore as women we must be free the triple oppression that we have been taught Kayona, when we started politics, we are still under that triple oppression. And as women, we still have to stand together. And we must not forget, when we fight this issue of gender-based violence, Honorable Speaker, let it be not political. We know we are politicians. But Honorable Speaker, these days, some of the things that are running, we have to, I have to forget my political party and many other women have to forget our and face the reality of this gender-based violence. Jola li dumi re a tswanela hori re ka eza di peto ka harana ha ya boruna mi buso ya mi rabe ya boruna e pahe mezi huji. Jolo ka muso honorable speaker udula ure sapoti. We 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 know in in the previous. Kanaka apartheid, muso uno uno bua just a little kabo But after 1994, where we got our 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 democracy, that is when we 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 felt rure rebo That is when we felt when the, when our our policies were 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 striving to 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 stand with women. Honourable Speaker, it's so sad this case when we check, we still have those women who are still oppressed. Ufumane me al oprase ka rale lapa me ha tsata a sabui me a thotse as leaders can honor that is why we have to step in i don't think honorable speaker is going to be right hore ebe mo haisane wa ka ya mona wa abisiwa but ke le me i'm not doing anything that is why we have to support that is why i'm saying the issue of gender of gender based violence let us not politicize it Immediately when my neighbor is, is abused where she stays, it's my role. It's my role to step in and check how best can I assist, how best how best can I save lives. Because the more we quiet, we keep quiet while women and, and children are abused, the more we are facing this death. boyfriend. What are we saying as women? Where were the neighbors? Honorable Speaker, as leaders, let's act like leaders. As women, as leaders, let us take initiative. Even if you don't want to be named, even the house of a the abuse is one came inside the home. You must make it aware. Let me not be known. But in this address, in this house, there is this abuse that I see. It's a hala. Hadi ek hete hileng horere kaja 
manolo a sello sa tokolo ya bomme le bona ba je manolo a a hubusa ka le hlwa ka le ka le hlokwane la tsebe hare eme ka maotore le bomme that is my plea honorable speaker let us support each other let us pull each other let us throw away this issue of pulling her down syndrome but yabo hlokwa hlokwa e kitlo go pare le bomme before i step down honorable speaker ke a hore as leaders as women let us take care even in in our neighbors where we are staying because more than the speaker we are also ba ahi ba motse re khona ho bona ha mathata a le teng re khona ho bona ha di tsekefetso di fe di le teng but e be rena le tendency ya hore it is not my business as a leader it is your business as a leader e tlo ba re di karabelo ba ha hore o bona hore na how best can you assist this women bao e le bao e le hore re ha isane le bona ha ba ha ba pele hantle honorable speaker pele teng re ya ya ngwana mme re ya ya holo bula tseo e neng e le tsa batswadi ba rona le mabala a bo rona ha e tsala speaker we will never get tired that is why i i i already uh, uh, asked my sister uh, honorable member ma kesini hore we are not going to tire as long as you know as a leader you are doing the right thing honorable members abafaz let us continue to do the right thing let us continue to protect each other let us continue to protect our bana ba rona especially bana ba ba rona ba banana ba o ibile ba bang motho ankelwa virginity ka hona ho repua ke di ke 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 di nokwane tsa tsena ke ke so ba le go ba bitsa bontate ke so ba hona le batho ba ile bontate ba o ile hore they deserve to be called untate but on this manner bana ba ile re ba bolaya bana ba rona ba hlekefetsa motho a rape a ba rape le ngwana 9 months they don't deserve to be called fathers that is why i'm saying women let us stand up and support each other and protect each other ya bo hlokwa hlokwa re protect le bana ba rona ba re ba hudisa ba o ile hore hosane ke bona ba itlo ba se chaba sa hosane ke bona ba itlo ba ba eta pele ba hosane we are not going to sit here and be leaders and be member honorable members for the rest of of our lives <coughs> bana bana ba ru hudisang ba re tla mere ba protect ke bona ba ile go sane they will be standing here and do and 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 do justice history is going to judge us if we are not going to do the right thing where we are leading and where we are staying thank you very much thank you very much honorable speaker for the opportunity thank you deputy honorable cleanance Um, Honourable Speaker, today we stand here to honour women. We have heard there is great praise for some past women leaders, mainly those who fought against apartheid and fought for democracy, like the 20,000 women who marched to the Union buildings in 1956. We stand to honour Charlotte Makeke, Ruth First, Helen Sussman and others strong women who were fearless in pursuit of justice. We also honor today's women, those who speak truth to power and advocate for women's rights, those who've achieved great things despite many obstacles, our young women who challenge the status quo, who stand up to be counted. The women of South Africa are amazing. Taking on a modern society, gaining skills through education and training, demanding gender equality, and defending the rights of other marginalized groups. We see women taking on leadership roles, being elected to serve in legislatures and gaining representation on boards of big companies, being appointed as administrators in government. Uotla Musadi, uotla Lefika. But speaker, we must also honor the forgotten woman those who must fight daily just for them and their children to survive. The women who every day must make a plan to get food for their hungry children or must find water or education opportunities or data for their kids. Women who see their children being denied jobs 
and must try to keep them motivated. Women who try, sometimes in vain, to protect their families from crime, drugs, gangsters and rapists, or protect their daughters from sugar daddies who come to buy and mislead the girls. Some of these are senior politicians. Girls are often left pregnant, at which point the sugar daddy disappears and cannot be reached. But the mother of this girl or her granny will still be there. These are the most courageous women. These are the ones we must stand and honor most of all. These are the women who we should build statues for, the ones who wake up every day faced by insurmountable difficulties and yet they still get up, start a fire to cook something, see the children get dressed and go off to school where they might perhaps also get a decent meal to lighten the burden of trying to find food again tonight. Many of these women are grannies who must look after grandchildren while their mother is out looking for work, or if she's lucky, working somewhere. Or perhaps the mother of the children is still at school. These grannies do not complain. They simply do it, as women in South Africa do. There is no choice but to do everything possible to make sure their family is safe and fed. These are the women you see standing somewhere with a little stall trying to sell something to make a bit of money, not to go gambling or buy fabulous handbags and hairdos. No, it is so that they can feed or educate their children. Uotla Musadi, Uotla Lefika, Speaker. And how do we, as politicians and elected leaders, respond? Do we say, yes, it's terrible, we must really help them, God help us, this is bad. Do we say, yes, this is really horrible, but what can we do? The reason for this is the economy, or COVID, or the drought, or apartheid, or white monopoly capital. After blaming something or someone else, we feel better and can go back to shopping or meeting with our friends or ordering KFC. Speaker, let me tell you how we are making things worse for these courageous women. Let me tell you how this government has betrayed them. Speaker, we know that almost all our municipalities have collapsed. Municipalities are where these women must live and make a life. According to the Provincial, Provincial Police Commissioner, when he briefed the members of this legislature on unrest in the province, he said the reason for protests are governance failures in collapsed municipalities, the lack of water, electricity, jobs and housing sites. And when these protests become violent, it is mostly because of the lack of an appropriate response from the political leaders. He also said these protests have happened in almost every municipality in the last four months. Speaker, <clears throat> in a report tabled in Cabinet on the 30th of June, the Minister of Carter classified 11 municipalities in the Free State as dysfunctional. These 11 are totally unable to manage their finances, deliver basic services or provide political leadership of any kind. Another 11 are high risk and only one district municipality is low risk. In a recent report by Corruption Watch, their re research finds that the main centers of corruption in municipalities are in the office of the municipal manager and the offices of the executive. No wonder these municipal leaders are unable to curb corruption. It is they themselves who are driving corruption. And what do many members of this legislature do about it? When they know that these municipal leaders are denying the people and mostly the women basic services to live a decent life. Speaker, members of this legislature protect them. 
Members of this legislature will make excuses, saying it's the economy, it's the culture of non-payment, or it's the drought, or the legislative framework, or apartheid, or ach shame. Speaker, when we fail to call those corrupt leaders to account, we are spitting in the face of those courageous women we stand here talking about today. Uotla Musadi, Uotla Lefika becomes meaningless when politicians rather pre protect the corrupt thieves who are causing the terrible suffering of our women. Then it is just hot air, and they should rather just shut up. If senior politicians in this legislature would rather protect the corrupt cadres who are robbing the people, then they should not grandstand by pretending to honor the woman. As long as women must still do their washing by the river and must watch their children go to bed hungry or must see their children turn to drugs because there is no hope that they will ever have a job or a career, then a day like today is nothing but an insult to them. If we are serious about the dignity of women and how wonderful and courageous they are, then surely we must fire these thieves. If we are not prepared to hold municipal leadership accountable for the collapse of municipalities, then our words are hollow and meaningless. Honourable Speaker, some of you will say, but it's not our fault if municipalities collapse. What can we do about it? There is one thing which we can do, and that is to implement Section 139 interventions and bring about effective management in those municipalities. The Constitution demands of provincial government and national government to intervene where a municipality cannot deliver basic services or its financial situation is extremely dire. The provincial executive even has the power to dissolve a council. But, Speaker, we now know that the five municipalities which were placed under administration in the Free State since 2018 are all now on the list of dysfunctional municipalities as determined by the Minister of Cocta. Clearly, these interventions were totally ineffective and a waste of time and money. But why did they not achieve any improvement? The answer lies in the manner in which the intervention is decided on by the provincial executive and implemented by the MEC. In terms of Section 140 of the Constitution, any executive decision must be in writing and when that decision is in terms of legislation, it must be tabled in the House. In seven years, I have never seen such a report, either in the House or in the committee. The legislature must monitor executive actions, such as interventions, but we most often hear that a municipality has been placed under administration on social media. What utter contempt for this legislature that the elected leadership of the province is not even informed of Sutton's and these same elected leaders in this legislature protect their colleagues in government. We have experienced this over and over again. Speaker, let us see what actually happens in such an intervention. In Metsi Maholo, the MEC announced an intervention in in February 2020, councillors resisted, so the MEC took them to court, incurring huge legal costs. On the 8th of June this year, the Select Committee on COCTA in the NCOP unanimously refused to allow the intervention, citing that it is no longer necessary, the existing problems can be addressed by council itself, and that the intervention be terminated immediately. The committee further noted with concern that the first intervention of February 2020 did not comply with constitutional requirements and was procedurally flawed. What an embarrassment. This rebuke of the MEC by the NCOP committee highlights the disregard with which the MEC has been playing games with this constitutional mandate. Not only that, 
But because the Metsimaolo intervention was never in line with the Constitution, it will now be deemed irregular by the Auditor General, thus saddling the Department with a finding of wasteful and fruitless expenditure for all the legal costs. Speaker, this saga confirms the suspicion that the Exco in the Free States is itself dysfunctional. The Department of Carter, which incurred 46 million in irregular expenditure, is in no position to support and assist municipalities, let alone place them under administration. And who suffers most because of this? Our women who reside in these municipalities. An even more outrageous saga is playing out in Malutia Pufung, where poverty and unemployment is rife. In this case, the MEC presided over an illegal meeting where the council, while under joint national and provincial administration, illegally appointed an MM and CFO, who then illegally awarded themselves a 40% salary increase. This prompted the very competent administrator to pack his bags and leave. The MEC unilaterally lifted the intervention, leaving the entire cabinet in the dark. The MEC continued defending all the illegal activities that he had engineered and is eventually now suing the corrupt MM and the corrupt CFO and the corrupt Troika, who are in turn trying to implement, implement, implicate the whole council. While all these shenanigans carry on, we continue to defend the indefensible. And the woman of the free state continues suffering. The grannies continue fetching water from empty tankers. The young girls continue falling pregnant because they cannot resist the money and gifts brought by the horny old sugar daddies. While these courageous women with their patience and their fortitude continue trying to survive. The ANC politicians sit around Honourable tables. Plain hands. Yeah, I think this is the house, sitting of the house. You must mind your language. There Thank are you words speaker. you really cannot use in this house. It doesn't matter how you feel. We need to respect the decorum of the house, really. Thank you, Speaker. I think you must withdraw whatever you said. I withdraw, Speaker. Sure. Speaker, I wonder what Charlotte McKeke or the Ruth First, or Helen Joseph would think if they were to visit Kwakwa or Zamdela or Batu location today. Would they think that the justice they fought for has been achieved? Would they be happy to see their sisters standing for hours waiting for 350 rand? Would they be satisfied with the shacks this government built in Lindam Kondu? Or would they agree that this is the ultimate betrayal? That incompetent cadres can rob the money meant for replacing asbestos roofs or building houses or laying pipes or buying PPE for nurses. How dare you protect these thieves and then shout, U otla musadi, u otla lefika, to appease your own conscience. Shame on you, ANC. Shame on you. Uh, thank you, Honourable Clean Hands. Uh, Honourable Amy Sikoloi. The Premier, members of the Legislature, viewers on visual platform. Honorable Speaker Eric Rikiri, Salomon Khodinye Nabome, Mo Rikete Kang, Kapare Hopulang, Baita Pele, Barona Banto, Yabizeko, Kesalo Setsu Sichaba, Kapakibuele Sichaba Hore. Musona Rona wa African National Congress, Tasabuza Maisi Bame Mantombela. Rinkila Mazapa Amangata, Ahubona Hore, Hobalitu Program, 
tseo e leng hore re dikinya tshebetsong ho fetola maphelo a basadi le a bana na ba gona le a bana ba gona ka ga freestata moso wa gona wa wa african national congress ha wa putha matsoho re ke ke bega kwala mahlo bana ga bo speaker ka hore bo me ba gona ha ba ka ba ba ha ba ka ba ba mo ba lenteng ka le baka la apartheid empa hona ho bolela hore la apartheid e bile le khahlamelo le tsusumetso maphilong a bo me ba gona ba afrika borwa mo wa african national congress o ile wa bona hore o etsa matsapa a go maphilo a bona a fetowe ha e ka le mo taba ena e tlwa baneng di kreche go bane bana bana di kreche ha o ya pele e tlo ba bomme ba ka o sane e kena di primary school sing mo bana ba banana ho sane e tla ba mbosi ba o sane e kena di secondary schools le di teacher mo ileng hore wana musona wa african national congress ka ga di pepetso tseo e leng hore ha re hanane le tsona o re di teng mo e leng hore re bona bana ba gona ba fumantswa di basari ka o fetisisa ba banana honorable speaker it is befitting that every year in august our country marks women's month we also set time aside to pay tribute to more than 20000 women who marched to the union buildings on the 9th of August 1956 in protest against the extension of past laws to women, a system meant to control women even further and reduce women to passive beings at the mercy of men. We celebrate this year's Women's Month under the theme Generation Equality, Realizing Women's Rights for an Equal Future. The concept of generation equality is a global campaign and links South Africa to global efforts to achieve gender equality by 2030 which both the state provincial government embraces. From the recent quarterly labor force survey by the Statistics South Africa for second quarter 2021 black women are the most vulnerable with unemployment rate of over 30%. Ke ka ho ke hlalositseng hore ho duma tse o tsohle mmuso wa gona Afrika borwa o etsa magobon thiti a o bona go basadi ho tlwa ka diprograme tse tswang hore ba tswe ka ga le hlatsipalena la tlhokeo ya mosebetsi. This shows that women continue to be marginalized nationally and globally in terms of employment, access to education, resources and power this is the assertion made by ILO that participation rate of women in the global labor force is 26.5 percentage points below that of men while there are some improvements on the inclusion of women in the mainstream economy through legislative frameworks such as employment equity act some historically male dominated sectors are still lagging behind Honorable Speaker, the historic march of the 1956 generation of women was a turning point in the role of women in the struggle for freedom and society at large. Since that eventful day, women from all walks of life became equal partners in the struggle for a non-racial and non-sexist South Africa. During Women's Month, we continue, Honorable Speaker, to celebrate their dedication, courage and vision for a world where women and men, boys and girls live together as equals. Together, we must continue, honorable speaker, to fight for women and men in our country to live as equal beneficiaries of development. It is only through women's full and equal participation in all areas of public and private life that we can hope to achieve this sustainable peaceful and society promised in our government's program of action we are inspired by this women patriots who 
who took up the fight for gender equality and freedom. We are inspired by the likes of Lillian Goyi, Mama Helen Joseph, Rahima Musa, and Sophia williams Brain, to name a few of the core leaders. In celebration of Women's Month, Honorable Speaker, the government recognizes the crucial roles rural women play in reducing poverty, reducing hunger among their children, and contributing to social stability in their communities. Indeed, we draw strength and inspiration from the brave and courageous heroines who prove to the nation and the world that women have exceptional leadership qualities and the power to change the world. We call upon the women of today to emulate the visionary leadership of the heroines of 1956 who set out to build a safe and secure country for our children to live in. Honorable Speaker, COVID-19 pandemic has threatened the well-being and lives of all human beings. Evidence shows that the pandemic and the responses to its excavate existing development fault lines, that is, inequality based on gender, race, and ge geographical location. West impacts are often felt by the most vulnerable, particularly honorable speaker, women and girls, who face multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination and deprivation. The COVID-19 pandemic has deepened the inequality and deprivation experienced by women and girls, increased poverty and unemployment in South Africa, lockdown caused an increase in gender-based violence because it effectively made it easier for perpetrators to torment their victims with little or no room for support services. The GBV and Femicide Command Center alone recorded, Honorable Speaker, more than 120,000 victims in the first three weeks of lockdown. It is becoming increasingly urgent to put together all resources available to complement government efforts to fight this shadow pandemic. The Minister of Police, Honorable Becky Kele, when releasing the national crime statistics for the first quarter from the 1st April to 30 June 21, once mentioned one of the first state, Honorable Speaker, police station Bloomsprite, and here in Mangau Metro Municipality, as one of the top 30 police stations having the highest number of rape cases in South Africa. Basadi Baruna Kara Frestata, Honorable Speaker, Bashabani, Le Pepezo, Enaya Horekadina Kosena Kaufela, Boholo Babona, Baya Repua. In coordination with the presidency, the office of the premier, like I had already in indicated earlier on, has already established a multi-sectoral GBV technical committee championed by the Honorable Premier Messi Sintombela. Six sub subcommittees are also in place to plan, monitor, and evaluate implementation in line with the following six pillars of the GBVF National Strategic Plan 2020 to 2030. The first, the first pillar thereof being accountability, coordination, and leadership. Prevention and rebuilding social cohesion. Protection, safety, and justice. Response, care, support, and healing. Economic power, research, and information system. Rerata Olebua, Honorable Premier Messi Sintombela. We are pleased to, to report that the first state government, through the district delivery model, has assigned the MEC of COCTA to lead municipalities in GBV interventions with contributions from all spheres of government, including civil society organizations. As a result, action has already been taken to identify root causes of high crime rate in bloom spread, and actions have already been taken such as elimination of hubs that criminals took advantage 
of perpetuate the of to perpetuate their acts of violence will fight the scourge of GBV until women are living without fear in communities. Honorable Speaker, as a responsible government, will continue to respond decisively to the despicable act of violence against children and women. It is sickening to hear from time to time that children under the age of five are raped and brutalized. This savage act of violence and crime it way at the moral fiber of our society. The abuse of alcohol in the province is also a serious problem and often leads to domestic violence. Poor women and children, especially those on rural speaker from rural communities, are more likely to be victimized because they have fewer protection, less privacy, and fewer resources. Domestic violence and abuse is a prevalent and life-threatening social problem facing our society. Domestic violence has a negative effect on children who are not only directly abused themselves, but who witness abusive behavior between their parents and other grown-ups, honorable speaker. Besides violence against women, poverty and unemployment are the biggest challenges facing women. In today's world, women are more likely than men to be poor and at risk of hunger because of systematic discrimination they face in education, healthcare, employment, and control of assets. Still on GBV, the provincial government, coordinated by the Office of the Premier, has on the 25th of August coordinated an economic empowerment workshop for women-owned businesses in partnership with the STIA, provincial treasurer, SIDA, and other stakeholders in line with five pillars of the GBVF National Strategic Plan. The main objective, Honorable Speaker, was to empower women in business towards statutory compliance requirements so as to enhance their access to government procurement opportunities. Government acknowledges the main challenges that they are faced with, amongst them being lack of access to both markets and startup finance. We'll continue to work together with key stakeholders to improve this. Honorable Speaker, let me highlight to the legislature that the preferential procurement regulation 2017 allows and encourages organs of state to use small enterprises that fall under the designated groups in terms of their preferential procurement regulations 2017. These designated groups mean black designated groups, black people, women, people with disability, or small enterprises as defined in section one of the National Small Enterprises Act. Speaker, arranging of transversal contracts is within the mandate of the Free State Provincial Treasury. Six transversal contracts were arranged between the periods of 2018 to 2021 and contracts given to Free State based suppliers. The following transversal contracts contracts were rewarded. Rendering of catering service, services, 63 companies were appointed, of which 45 women-owned companies were appointed. Rendering event management contract, 11 companies were appointed, of which two women-owned business were given an opportunity. Rendering of travel management services, Four companies were appointed, of which five women-owned companies were appointed. Transport and shuttle, seven companies were appointed, and two women-owned companies were appointed. Public information plat platform, one company appointed, which is 100% women-owned. Free State spent, during the period 2015 to 2020, $35,289,000,000 on goods and services of which 12% women-owned companies were given an opportunity to provide these goods. Lehafela 12% is Honorable Speaker. 
province ya rona ha eso ka ifihla ho 50-50 ka yona 30% set aside ba ken saba bo mme ba rona ba frustrate speaker let me also indicate that the free state provincial treasury together with the dstia are in the process of developing a strategy to ensure that the provincial government leverages on government procurement in supporting various sectors of our provincial economy and local production. The aim of this strategy is also to look into the issue of local manufacturers, which needs to address issues of unemployment and getting small businesses to compete with larger manufacturers. The Free State Government coordinated various activities during this month, Kikaho Kilebuang Primiri Yaruna. And these activities are as follows Free State Women in Construction Dialogue, Free State Female Farmer Dialogue, Free State Women in School Leadership, Honoring Free State Female Law Enforcement Officials on the 25th and attending to the challenges thereof. Seminar of the Destia under the theme, Voice of Women Thriving in Their Business and Careers. Honoring of all females, including those living with disabilities and attending to their challenges thereof, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, today, the 27th of August, the Honourable, Honourable Premier is presiding over the Public Service Women Management Week, hosted to, uh, to assess progress made in the implementation of the Head of Department's Eight Principles Action Plan for promoting women's empowerment and gender equality in the public service by departments. Over the past 27 years of democracy, government made deliberate, deliberate effort to improve the status of women. Today, I report that out of 378 members of senior management service across all prov provincial departments, 141, that is 37%, are women. Our task to break the glass ceiling towards achievement of 50-50 representation for SMS members requires concerted efforts. As the government, we want to indicate that we will continue to promote the appointment of women into management positions in the public service and state own enterprises, including career progressions from lower ranks where women are already in majority. However, a need motion and appointment of women to decision making positions in the private and other sectors can discriminated against and deprived of basic needs because of their sex. The also continues to be systematic discrimination against women in education, healthcare, employment, and control of assets. And tipping the potential of women will result not only in increased opportunities for women and girls, but also in concrete improvements in the national economy, peace and security, and development. Honorable Speaker, as government, our main focus is to facilitate the empowerment of women to become equal participants in economic, social, and political spheres. Government acknowledges the historical inequalities that have disadvantaged women, limiting development, opportunities, and representation in decision-making position. It is beneficial to educate women and girls because they, in turn, will ensure the education, health care, and better nutrition of their children and families. We must support the efforts of women to increase their household incomes by empowering them to start or expand businesses because it is known that women are drivers of sustainable economic growth. We encourage women to participate in the economic sector such as finance, information technology, and engineering sectors. 
Let me conclude by saying the last decade has witnessed remarkable progress for the, ad uh, for the advancement of women in Thank areas you. of political representation and women Thank you, Honourable venturing MC. into previous marginalized fields. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you, Honourable MEC. The Honourable Members, the conclusion of the debate by Honourable MEC Goloi brings us to the end of the business of the House. The House shall now adjourn until further notice. Thank you, Honourable Members. The House is adjourned.